Welcome. My name is Eileen, and I'm going to lead you through a series of Katona Yoga. And we're going to start with the first floor. The first floor is going to cover the feet, the legs, the pelvic floor. And this is all about stability. So stability in your legs like the roots of a tree. So we're going to lead you through a standing series, a hang and a fold series, and we're really going to articulate the first fold, which is in the hips. So in Katona Yoga, we don't work with flexibility or with muscle, but we rather work from joint space. So start with us on hands and knees. So we're going to prepare ourselves. So we always take blocks to measure right angles. So you can take a block if you have one handy. And first you can measure a right angle in your arms. So a right angle always flushes bones, so you know that you're in a perfect angle to set up the perfect conditions. So if you have set up your right angles in your hands, you're going to flip the right leg in front of the left, and we'll start in Gomukhasana to articulate the first foot between the two legs. So separate your feet just a little bit more, and then you can see a triangle between your feet and your knees. So what we're going to do, we're going to go around in time. So imagine the digits on the clock. So you'll go from 12 to 3 to 6 to 9. So stay steady through your feet. Stay well connected and well plugged in while you're going around yourself. So imagine you're at the center of yourself and everything around you is your circumference and your circumstances in life. So start to see where you don't like to go because normally, the digits we don't like are the times in the day we don't like either. So keep going, keep turning, keep using your pelvis, keep using your hips. One or two more rounds here. Good, and then slowly come back to the center. Now come into fingertips and walk your hands a little bit further back. Now start to press your feet firmly into the floor, and if it's available to you, plug your feet in and take your hands onto your hips. So the feet stay on the back, and while your hands come onto the hips, you really want to make sure that that right hip is pushing back while the left hip is coming around. If this is too hard, take two blocks in front of you and place your hands just on top of the blocks. If it's available to you, take your arms over the sides and frame yourself up. So the hand goes into the elbow while the other hand goes into the other elbow, and then you find your pubis, from your pubis, you find your navel, from the navel, your sternum, and you're opening up a little back bend. So you want to turn your heart at two o'clock because this is where the heart wants to sing out to the world. One more deep breath here, keep anchoring back through the heart, and then very slowly bring your hands back to the floor. And then you can either turn around fully or just unwind the legs, bring the left leg in front, Turn around 360 degrees until the left leg is in front again. So we're going to do the other side now. Make sure your feet are separated again. Archetype of a triangle between the heels and the knees. And you really want to stick the back of the knee into the belly of the front knee. Now several options with your hands. Either you're coming on to fingertips or you could even flip your palms. So flipping the palms is a really important thing to flush the lungs. Opening the lungs is like opening the windows of your house. So you want to make sure that your collarbones are available. And then straighten your arms. If you're a hyperextender, bend your elbows just a little bit. The fingers are going to be pointed 180 degrees because this is a mini collarbone and the collarbone houses the lungs. So this time we're going to go counterclockwise. So we're going to go against the grain. So we're going to go from 12 to 9 to 6 to 3. So the drishti, the vision, is always a little bit out because you really want to see a glimpse into the unknown, a glimpse into the future, and then you want to make sure that you're fully connected, fully plugged in through the feet, through the hands, and then find your ujjayi breath if you haven't done so, the oceanic nice sound to soothe your kidneys. Go for another two rounds here. So fully go around in time because time is circular and round. And then slowly come back to the center. Find your feet. Find the substantiation through the knees. And then slowly bring your arms back onto your hips again. So if this is not possible, take the blocks in front of you 
and then eventually bring the arms up again. So make sure that this time the arm which was behind comes to the front. Again, hand into elbow like a plug in a socket or a ball in a mitt. And then again, find a little back bend while drawing one hip back, the other one is turning around. Lift your chin to open up your thyroid, open up your eyes. One more deep breath here and then slowly release, bringing your hands down to the floor. And then from here, very slowly unwind the legs, unwind the feet, plug yourself in through all of the four corners and then plug your feet down and then very gently press yourself into a first downward facing dog. So start to walk your dog by bending one leg after the other, stretch it out, walk it out. So do it personal in the beginning. And then at some point we start to archetypally express the dog. So we want the dog to have 60 degree angles in the wrists, in the feet and in the groins. So you wanna lift your heels. Maybe this is not very typical, but in our practice, we always lift the heels because the heels represent the seat. The seat is really meant to get over. So bending the knees to have a conjunction, to have the kidneys open, will give you a nice fold from your hip joint. So lifting the seat even higher is gonna bring that crescendo into your lower back. So we're opening up all the angles, we're gonna open up all the curves, and then she can have a plumb line from her perineum all the way down into the crown of her head. So finding the index and the thumb, which press down into the earth very firmly, and then one deep breath here. So we're taking out the angles in the armpits, and now onto the next inhalation, we'll shift into a high plank, bring the shoulders over the wrists, and now, as I said, the feet are substantiation, their roots. So one part of you is always reaching back, anchoring back, while the chin and the drishti is coming out. Pubis is coming forward, navel is coming forward, vision is coming forward. And then bend your knees again and fold back to a downward facing dog. So we're gonna do this a few times. So we're gonna fold and unfold. So come into a 90 degree angle, shoulders on top of the wrists and push back for down dog. So don't go too deep. So some people go too deep, others don't. So we always wanna have ears in line with the outer edges of the arms, armpits turning towards the heart. And then again, inhale, shift into a high plank. Vision is always a bit out. And then two more times you fold and unfold using the pedals and the feet, the balls which represent the lungs. And then last one, down dog, and then shift one more time into a high plank. So this time we're gonna use the legs even more by flipping and unflipping the palms. So if this is too much for you, you can always do it on your knees. Make sure you're having right angles. So we're gonna flip and unflip so we're actually flushing the bones, we're opening up the windows, and we're making sure that the fingers are pointed 180 degrees towards the body. So make sure you're going over your obstacles, really lift those arms high, root down through the feet, have a tenacity, one more round, looking out. Good, and then again, push back into your dog. So find the crescendo on your lower back again, turning your armpits towards your heart. Deep breath here. On your next inhalation, take your right hand onto your lower back. So right now, you're standing on your left palm. So the left palm is your left lung. So what we wanna do, we wanna have the palm facing up. And now we draw a line from the left wrist all the way down into the right foot. So we cross-reference the center. Switch sides. Right hand goes down left palm onto the lower back. So we really wanna make sure that the hand is plugged in, index knuckle down, and then cross reference into your left leg. One more deep breath here. Slowly bringing both hands down. And again, find the archetype of a triangle, strength, structure, and stability. On your next inhalation, step your right foot all the way to the top, and then bring the back knee down. So again, we're gonna take the block to measure a right angle. So the block is always giving us a good information because it's archetypal. We don't wanna use feelings, we rather use 
a good measure, 90 degrees, is a really good portal to enter all the other angles. So bring your arms out, especially two and 10 o'clock. Now you will feel how your knee is going to stick into your armpit. So this will really organize your kidneys on the back. You could start to roll that hip around and flush all the limbs in your armpit. Now finding the center of the back foot is gonna be utterly important, so you wanna be bouncy. So finding the heel in line with the third toe, and very slowly from that hip joint start to unfold, bring your arms up, 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 turning armpits towards the heart. And then again, frame yourself up. So you're giving yourself a nice containment. So you don't have to go too deep. What do you wanna do? You wanna find your feet rooting down, one part of you is anchoring back and one part of you is going out. So find your pubis to your navel, to your sternum and give yourself some height. So the vision is always out. So we want to create space in the joints. So one part is always anchoring while one part is coming out. So we create joint space. It's like origami folding. So if eventually you want to go deeper, you could lift up the back knee don't tuck the toes, just by finding the center, you're actually taking the weight out of the knee. One more deep breath here and then slowly come back again. Release your arms and now flip the right palm again. Now find the wrist and bring the heel of the hand onto the same height as the heel of the foot. Now use your leg like a door. So the door is closing so energy can be contained and flow through. And the leg is going to give the torso to spin. While using the feet slowly and eventually, you're going to open up into the twist. So finding the left hip turning to nine o'clock, finding the right hip at three o'clock, and the vision can go up because when we turn, eventually the neck is free. One more deep breath here. And then very, very slowly release, bring your hands down, push back, downward facing dog. So again, you're having four perfect points of contact. You're fully plugged in, energy can flow through. Turn your armpits towards the heart, Stick your seat up, bend your knees, have a conjunction, and then again, second side. Step the left foot all the way to the top and bring your back knee down. So some of you want to take the left foot out a little bit more to create the space for your hip bones. Some of you want to take the heel a little bit further to the front to really articulate a step into the future. Measuring your arms, making sure that the knee goes into the armpit, it's like a ball in a socket, and then eventually you want to find the center of the back foot, even find the pinky, that's it. And then slowly unfold, bringing the arms out, coming out, and then again, finding that beautiful frame. And then from here, if you haven't switched your arms, do so. So instead of going too deep, you really want to come out through your pubis, find the arc line of potential, moving into the belly, into the sternum, so the heart can anchor back and lift your chin, have a vision, give yourself a beautiful containment. Eventually, you could lift off the knee if you want to go deeper, finding that center, the bounce, and maybe one more deep breath here. You could always take a block and give yourself a little height. And then bring the knee back down again, release the arms, and then do the switch, lifting the left arm, flipping the palm, making sure that the fingers are pointed towards the body, and then the opposite arm moves up, and then you want to turn the armpit towards the heart, this always opens the lung. Having your hips steady, having your kidneys steady, because kidneys are all about safety, all about stability, finding your pelvic floor steady, Vision is up, one more deep breath here. And very slowly bring both of your hands down again. Push back, downward facing dog. So one more time, enjoy the surface of a square, both feet down, both hands down. And then you can look to the top of your mat and then slowly walk or float your feet to the top of the mat. And start to find a fold. So there's always a good measure so you can take two fists and measure the space between your arches of the feet 
or you take the entire foot length to measure the size of your hips. Because the body is meant to be proportional. The body is designed to fit. So always fit yourself first before you fit anyone else. So finding a little bend in the knees and lifting your seat even higher is going to give you that space in the sacrum, letting the head dangle. And what we really want to do, we want to get over ourselves. So lifting the seat is going to get yourself so much freedom of getting over your old propensities. So take a few breaths here, connecting all four corners in your feet, inside of the heel, outside of the heel, big toe and pinky toe. And then very slowly, while rooting down through your feet, you're going to come up by floating your arms over the sides. Take them with you and unfold until you find your hands interlaced above your head and then space between your shoulders, space between your palms, turning the armpits again towards the heart. So put yourself on a spit. So imagine that the universe is coming through you, through your skull, all the way down into your third eye, moving into your throat, into your heart space, further down into your pelvic floor, through your perineum, connecting you down into the magma center of the earth. This is your Sutratman. Bring your hands to your chin and then bring your elbows slightly up. From here, we slowly gonna fold down by sticking the seat out. While the seat is going out, the front is coming forward. So we're finding a first fold, a back bend, and then from there, she's gonna come down, down, down until her lungs touch the thighs. So there should be no space between the lungs and the thighs, so we're fully connected. Connection is safety. Now bring your right hand to your left elbow, left hand to the right elbow, and give yourself that frame again. So we're going to open up the liver, we're going to stretch the lungs. So she's going to push her seat back while her knees are coming forward, and she's going to find that back bend. So pubis, navel, sternum, vision, and then slowly strain your legs, come up. Switch the grip in your elbows and then you come down again. So do this a few times. It's going to be hard, but it's going to really stretch your liver, your vision, and finding that good first fold in your hips. The first origami fold is always in the hip because the hips are the biggest joint. So keep going, bend your knees, come out, out, out. And if you have a body, this is so much easier. Stand up and then switch the palms and the grip one more time, and then slowly come down again. So there are always the opposing energies. Look out, out, out. Well, one thing is moving back, one thing is coming out. Okay, and now relax your head, relax your jaw, because the jaw always represents the hips. While your head is dangling, your sacrum is going to be free. Take a deep breath here. Now slowly, Bring your hands onto your hips, press the feet down, come all the way up, vertebra by vertebra, putting yourself onto your plumb line again and take your hands next to your body for Tadasana. So what we're going to do now, if you have a blanket handy, we're going to wear a heel underneath the heel because it's so much easier to give ourselves a little bit of vision, a little bit of height. So if you don't have a blanket handy, you could easily roll up your mat I would say five, six times, so the higher up the heel, the nicer. So, as I said, lifting the heel is going to give you more vision, it's going to give you more height, and then from here, here we're going to fold and unfold. So, as I said, yoga is origami for the body, so we always create space in the joints. So, now we're going to flip the palms underneath the heels. So, we're going to go underneath the heel, making sure that the third finger is just going to be at the center. And by bending the knees, we're going to stick the knees into the armpits. That's how we take the muscle out of the back. So, she's going to lift her seat a little bit higher up. And then from here, she's going to fold and unfold. So, she's going to come down and she's going to go up. So it's folding and unfolding from the joints, creating so much space, so much bounce. And it's really the analogy of life. We go in to hibernate, we go out to participate. We open up the space so we can really be connected to ourselves from an idea of space, rather than putting ourselves into a fit which serves others rather than us. A few more times, you will feel it in your legs, you will feel the stability, 
Two more, keep breathing. That's it. And then once you're done, you just take a moment, keep your hands connected, letting your head dangle. So really using the ujjayi breath to soothe the kidneys because kidneys are all about waters, the waters of safety, the waters of your ancestors. So what we gonna do now? We're gonna stay connected because we fit ourselves so well that we can go out like a Ouroboros. So either we walk like Anne or we could even try to jump. So whatever you try to do, get over yourself. Really walk over obstacles. So if you feel frisky, try to jump while staying connected or you then walk around little step by step and then come back again. So take your hands back onto your hips, press the feet down and then you come up vertebra by vertebra. Take your hands next to your body and take a moment to pause closing your eyes. So really open up all the spaces in your body, all the quadrants. So we take a moment to cross-reference the two shoulders. So we're going to move opposite to the opposite hip, opening up the space in between, opening up the center. And then we're going to do the same thing from the hips to the opposite knee. So we're going to open up that space. And then the last one from the knees all the way down into the opposite heels. One more time, inhale, float your arms over the sides. And exhale, fold for Uttanasana bow. So go all the way down, keep a micro bend in your knees. And then step back for your downward facing dog. So in your dog, one more time, organize yourself. Measure the distance of a foot. Lift your seat high up. So I really wanna have that downward facing slope from your hips into your shoulders. And then very, very slowly, you can come down onto your knees. And then we're gonna end that series with a little pigeon hip opener. So pigeon is not an easy pose, so I highly recommend taking a blanket to really elevate the seat. So you always wanna make sure that your pelvis is nicely tilted so you're having a little downward slope. So, the higher, the better. So you imagine you put yourself onto a throne. So we start with the right leg underneath and the left leg is gonna come on top. So the perfect pigeon would have a triangle in the negative space. So from your knees to your pubis, there should be a triangle. Now, second point is the heel is gonna come just on top of the knee and the knee just on top of the heel. If you're here, don't worry. So just take your hands out. Maybe you're even lucky to have two blocks. So you can really open up the space here and then slowly move forward. If this doesn't work at all, an option would be taking your feet parallel, the shins parallel, but don't stack your legs on top of one another. This is also going to give you a great fold because eventually you want to come forward. So make sure that your feet are in two 90 degree angles and wherever you are, you can walk further to the front, really opening up the hip joint. So this is not a pose where you're feeling comfortable. So don't give up if it's really a nice pull in your hips. It's the only way how we can articulate the unfolding. So take a few breaths here. Good. So if you want to stay longer, just take a pause in your video and stay for five minutes, maybe even 10. And then eventually you will bring the right hand to the left elbow and left hand to the right. You're going to give yourself a frame and then you can unfold. So you got to come up, 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 up. Good and switch sides. So you have to know that both sides in your hips, both sides in your body are so different because we're having the left side, which is the mother stock, the esoteric side, and the right side, which is our paternal stock, which is the more pragmatic side. Whatever you have as a sensation, be wary that we just wanna have insights about it 
You don't have to fix anything with yoga. We just keep practicing, and by the virtue of repetition, we can unwind old patterns, old habits. So if this particularly is a hard one for you, this is for you. So keep practicing what feels unbearable, because this is how we resolve the issues. So keep breathing. A few more breaths, and same thing applies here. If you want to pause the video, just stay for a few more breaths. And then slowly, slowly bring your right hand to the left and left hand to the right again. And then you unfold again, slowly coming out of it. And then you have created the connection through your feet, through your pelvis, through your umbilical cord, which connects you to the earth. So if you want to take a Shavasana, feel free to add a Shavasana. So thank you so much for practicing. Namaste.